Hey, welcome to the first episode of the Flexus Swap. Um, as you can see, I've already taken out the engine. If you want a tutorial on how to do that, see the link below that I have. Working on rebuilding this 5.3 Junkyard LS. Um, I'm not gonna go into much detail building this. One, because I've never built an engine and I don't want you guys to learn the bad habits that I do. I will let you know mistakes that I find out that I did myself. After this engine is built, then we're gonna go ahead and try to fit it into the Lexus. I've noticed right off the bat when I put this engine before I disassembled it, I put it into the Lexus, the engine bay, and some of the things I noticed were just how small the transmission tunnel is. It's actually pretty crazy small. Um, it's what you'd expect for a smaller car, but we're gonna be trying to take this 4L60, 4L60E and which is a truck engine, uh, truck transmission. We're gonna try to fit it in there. So there's gonna be some modifications specifically with that corner and that one right there. And then I believe after that modification, it should fit better. I'm gonna be fabricating up some mounts myself for both the transmission and the frank, the engine mounts. So I've got a couple steel plates ready to go. I'm gonna weld that up. But another things that are gonna be super useful are these generic LS swapped uh, engine mounts. Basically what I'm thinking of with these is they're going to go where the stock bolts, stock engine mounts were, and then basically have that set up right there and then one on the other side to hold the LS engine. Something else that I have to cover, um, most, if not most LS engines with exception of a couple, um, I believe GTOs have front mount, front sump oil pumps. This one though, the Vortec does not have front sump. It has a rear sump oil pan. So what I had to do was go ahead and order this one is just a generic front sump oil pan. Well, reason I like this oil sump here, which you'll see in later videos, is the fact that it came with an oil pickup. So I don't have to modify a original one off of a GTO. What I will have to do is do some modification to this windshield tray to make the oil pickup fit that rear sump um, windage tray, but it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, we'll cover that one. When I mocked up the engine bay, uh, the oil sump was not even close to getting touched. It, the engine was like way back here. I'd have to do some heavy modification, um, possibly remove this uh, support bar right here, just completely remove it. I didn't really want to do that. So I'm gonna be trying to get the front sump, which should fit pretty nicely right there. It definitely does fit. The only issue with that is matching up those holes with the, the mount holes on the block itself. I believe there's gonna be a little bit of a mismatch, so I'm gonna to have to have an adapter plate to move the engine forward and aft to make that fixed. One thing I'm working on right now is building the bottom end of the LS. We've already gotten it to the machine shop, got all the surfaces nice and clean. Um, did these myself, I made a hot tank for that, it's basically just get a metal bin, whatever you can find, farm and feed supply, probably has a really big trough for uh, animals. It's a really good idea. I found a beer cooler, an aluminum beer cooler at Walmart. Uh, it fits most things except for the crank. I had to hand clean that one. So what I've gone ahead and done right now is put the crank in. It's a mock setup. I got the plastic gauge going right here. You probably can't see that. You get, yeah, that little green thing. Uh, I'm gonna put the that cap on, torque everything down to spec, and then remove it. And then based off how much squish or how much that little piece of thread, the plastic gauge gets squished, it's gonna spread out and that'll tell me my clearances. Um, an issue that I ran into, of course, it's always the last bolt, but I was putting it in the, the inner main bearing bolt. It's a M10 by 2.0 thread, which is very hard to find. It's just a one-off only by a Chevrolet. So I called a bunch of fastener places. I called all over, nobody has it. They thought I was crazy for asking for that. Um, I did find one, plenty too, and very easy to find at a dealership. So just call up your local Chevy dealership. They're probably gonna have all the parts that you need here if something goes wrong. So like I said, the dealer hooked me up with uh, inner main bolt, 
What I'm gonna do is make a thread chaser, basically just cut a couple grooves into either side of this bolt and then thread it in and out real slowly. And then hopefully then the, the torque to angle bolts that originally came will be able to put in without any resistance. Status update part two. So I've been doing a lot of work with this engine. I have the bottom end assembled with the pistons in. Gap the rings, new bearings for both the rods and the main. Uh, for the gaps, I chose 2.5 and 2.6 on the top, just in case I want to do a small amount of boost on a turbo. Um, that is kind of what I built it for. So somebody, some of you have been asking why I've stuck with stock pistons and stock rods. So this one's a newer version of the rods. The pistons were already installed. I didn't really take off the rods, but the rods themselves, I definitely knew I wanted to keep. There's not really a point for me with the power that I was trying to get um, low 400s. Uh, those rods are going to hold up just fine. You can see a difference, a huge difference if you just Google it. The difference between the older gen and the newer gen rods and these things are definitely way thicker and more stout. So I am not worried about that being the weak point. Um, some things that I've been doing is cleaning the heads. What I've gone ahead and did was hot tank these, both of them, and then I put some boat aluminum cleaner that I got from Walmart. That thing is magical. I don't even need to wire the wire wheel because it just takes all the corrosion off and leaves a nice shiny, shiny finish. Um, the only concern with that thing is if you use that chemical cleaner, you have to instantly dry it. So that's why I've been making sure to dry, air dry as much as I can. Uh, you can see the difference between two of them. So I'm guessing that I air dried this side first and then this side was last. And you can see how it started to eat through a little bit just by staying on there too long and then drying. So as long as you don't let that chemical dry, then you're gonna be good to go. Um, other things that I went and did, uh, cleans each of the valve seals out, polished them a little bit, also polished the valves themselves. Um, and then I also reseated or valve lap, <clears throat> lap the edge. So you can see how the, the edges are nice and lapped. Uh, what you do with that is you take one of these and some of this stuff that you can get at AutoZone. It's just a valve lapping compound, valve grinding compounds. You put it on the seat of the valve and then put the valve in and then just go back and forth with this until the finish of the seat is pretty good. So I'm not worried about it. any of the valves leaking by. Uh, it should have really good compression. Other things I did was went ahead and port and polished the exhaust to let it be able to flow smoothly. Um, that middle part where the valve stem comes out, that was very big and round. I've gone ahead and tapered that down so it'll flow better. I polished the exhaust side only. The reason why is just to prevent carbon buildup. It doesn't really do any anything beneficial. If you polish the intake side, what will happen if you polish the intake side is the fuel that sprayed pretty atomized from the fuel injector, um, though it is direct injection, still might have a little bit of issue. If it's polished too much, the fuel will just stick to the sides and not create this uh, film layer. Of these, I left these bumps in here, these little tiny factory casting bumps, um, then it should act sort of like a dimple effect, not much, but I really just didn't want to polish it. Anything that was sticking out that was a casting uh, slag was definitely grinded down for sure. You can see in the back that I also ground down the valve stem. And then over here, you can see that little hump right there at the top right. And that is the where the rocker arm comes down right there. A lot of people grind that down all the way. 
I really didn't feel like it, just even though you can just seal it with some thread locker, I didn't want to deal with the hole there. It will do, um, it will affect the flow a little bit. So I just left it, grinded it down as thin as I could go without actually penetrating into the threaded hole. I was trying, basically with this these heads, I was trying for it to flow better instead of flow more. Uh, you ba basically want more velocity than you do more airflow, unless you're doing a huge horsepower build with a uh, high boost horsepower, but that's not what I'm building this engine for. So I didn't want it to be dogged down by just too much air going in slowly. You want to, enough air to come in quickly and be able to fill the chamber. If there's too big of holes, then it will never be able to flow into the chamber itself. It'll just stay in the inlet area. I went ahead and cleaned up the engine bay. Um, it was pretty dirty, especially for a 300,000 mile IS-300. It was uh, crazy. It was way worse than my older car out there when I had to clean that one. But um, some issues that I've come across that I'll have to figure out when I go ahead and start stripping and painting is this these wires it's a mess basically the wire that's coming out over there has to come over here into the fuse and this wire coming out over here has to go over there to more fuses and relays and then the ecu's all over there so it, there's just wires everywhere and you can't really pull it out there's like way more connections on the other side of this i already tried trying to pull all those connections out on the other side underneath the steering wheel and it's I gave up because it just goes in deeper and deeper and there's no way I can actually effectively remove all the wires without removing the entire dash and interior. So I didn't want to do that. I'm going to figure out a way to, once I get the engine running, condense down on some of the wires that are going through here, relap them. Uh, there's a cool thing on Amazon. It's called a pet protector. Uh, basically what it's for is if you have any wires or cables, extension cords running through your living room or inside the area of your house. It's a pretty decent plastic sheath that goes along the extension cord and protects it. There's some that are open with Velcro, but there's a big roll of like 50 feet for relatively cheap, like 10, $15. So you can get it in multiple colors. I'm probably gonna stay with black, but it's gonna make the engine bay, once I paint it and then use that, it's gonna make it look a lot better. I'm gonna try to do as much of a tuck as possible I'm not sure if I'm going to run any wires through the actual frame. That's going to be requiring some cutting. Um, might possibly just do that for the the lights up front, but most of it I'm just going to try to tuck against the sides underneath underneath here. Going over to this engine. So I got the short block assembled. I'm still going to try to get a couple of these carbon deposits off, but for now I got nice refinished uh, deck um, main bearing main bearings are in the main the crank all that the next step is to put the camshaft in uh, for the camshaft I have chosen Texas speed and performance so shout out to them thank you for delivering it was pretty quick delivery too so I'm happy about that uh, especially in these hard times with all the shipping stuff so going in here What we did was we got a high lift, um, high duration cam. And then because of that, I'm gonna need some of these 0 0.660 um, dual springs. And then um, I also got the crank bolt because once you use them and they're torqued, then you can't reuse them. I uh, also got some main seals and a couple other random gaskets for the camshaft. Other things I had to order separate was uh, the cam thrust plate. This O-ring right here is not replaceable and the one that I pulled off rips, it teared. Even if it doesn't tear when you pull one get off, um, it's most likely, if you look at it at an angle, it's most likely flush to the metal and that's no good. Other things I got is new chain. Uh, the one I took off was relatively good, but it was a, a bit loose for my taste, so I got a new one. Uh, make sure you let these soak prior to putting them on. And then also a new three bolt cam sprocket. Um, everything over here 
is all just gaskets and basically parts to put it all together. And hopefully, hopefully by the end of this week, I'll be able to have a completely assembled engine ready to go. I've kept the transmission not built yet. So right now it's just the shell. And the reason why I did that is it's gonna be easier for me to lift into the tunnel. Again, if you haven't, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you can find me at 5BN Customs. You can follow this build. I post pictures usually daily of what, what's going on. And hopefully you guys like the content. I'll see you next time.